Okay, so welcome back. This is part nine in our series where we show you how to write an application that you see here in Visual Studio that will do a couple of different things with your test instruments, your bench instruments, like your signal generator and your oscilloscope. And we showed you uh, in previous videos, I encourage you to take a look at those, how to write this application. And we started out showing you how to give this functionality where it does a frequency response analysis, where you program your signal generator and your oscilloscope to apply a range of frequencies coming out of the signal generator to whatever uh, electronic circuit you want to analyze. And then the oscilloscope will measure the output voltage and plot it here so that you can look at the frequency response of your circuit as you vary it across many different frequencies. Uh, then in previous videos, we added some functionality that you see here, where we show you how to uh, add functionality to grab the waveform shown on your oscilloscope and plot it here. And we, in future, will be showing you how to do what we've got here, where we are updating this waveform from the scope, and we're doing it every two-tenths of a second. And in fact, we can change channels and now we're looking at what's on channel one, and now we're looking at what's on channel two, and we're updating this every about two tenths of a second, or five times every second, to show you what's on the oscilloscope. So I encourage you to look at those previous videos. We cover a lot of uh, good information on um, how to program your test instrumentation. Now, in this video, we are going to look at something that's really, really important, which is finding out how fast your test equipment responds. In other words, when we're doing our frequency response, we are sending a command to the signal generator, your function generator, and saying, hey, change the frequency. Then that frequency is being changed. The output of the signal generator is then going to the circuit. It's going through the circuit. And then the oscilloscope is measuring the output voltage to determine what the response of the circuit is. That whole process takes a lot of time to set the signal generator to measure it from the oscilloscope, to calculate the peak-to-peak -peak voltage, and then send it back to our application. So the challenge is, how do we find out how long these devices take to operate? And we're gonna start looking at that in this video. And specifically, we're gonna look at ways to figure out how fast your signal generator responds to a command, and then actually makes the change and lets you know, okay, I've made the change. So let's take a look at our application and see how we can do that. So earlier in this series, we showed you how to develop this function generator application. And, and basically, it just opens the COM port, the USB port, uh, connecting to the signal generator, the function generator, and then allows you to read and write commands to the function generator to do things. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this application to figure out what is the response time of our signal generator. And we're going to do it by using this write button. And when we press the write button, it will send a command, and then it will measure how long it takes to get a response back. So here's the what we're going to have. We press the write button. When we get the OK, that means the signal generator has received the command and we get this response and we're going to measure how long it takes. And in our case, it takes about four milliseconds. We can do it again, five milliseconds, four milliseconds, and so on. So we're going to be able to figure out the response time of the signal generator using this very simple code. So let's go in to our application and see what the code is. So here is um, for our button right click, the event when we click the button, here is the code we're going to use to measure how long it takes to send a command and then receive an OK from the signal generator. So the first thing, we're going to use the stopwatch functionality in C Sharp Windows Forms. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to restart the stopwatch. So what this does is it resets the elapsed time to zero and starts measuring elapsed time. So we're going to do the restart, and then we are going to write our command 
and the command is going to be a W25 equals 3000. What that means is, and I encourage you to look at the um, video where we showed you how to program your uh, signal generator. This W25 sets the channel one volts, the peak to peak output volts to three volts. So we're sending a command. It doesn't really matter what command we send. We're just going to use this. And then we're going to read the response from the signal generator and see how long it took. We're initializing the index and response to zero and null. And the minimum response we can get from our signal generator will be a colon OK. Just about any other response we get is going to be longer than that. We're going to keep reading while the length of the response, whatever response we get, is less than three characters. And then we're going to call the string response. We're going to do func gen port. That's our serial port we did in the previous uh, video on programming your signal generator. And we're going to do a read existing to the COM port. And that is a serial port method uh, in the serial port class to read existing data. And what we're going to do is we're just going to loop through this until we get a response that is greater or equal to three characters, which means we have some information. Um, so response equals function port existing. And then we're going to increase the index. So it'll give us indication of how many times it went through this uh, before it got a response. Now we can also add a thread.sleep if we want. Um, I don't really see a need to do it, but it's there if you want. Um, this could be one millisecond or whatever. And then once it has a response that is equal to or greater than three characters, it's going to step out of this and we're going to stop the stopwatch. And then we can send to our text box, as we showed, the response, which is what the response, the, the string response from the signal generator. And then we'll print out the index, which is this IDX value. And then we will say response in stopwatch dot elapsed milliseconds. And that is again a, a get from the stopwatch class. It tells us the elapsed milliseconds. And we're going to add milliseconds and the carriage return line feed. So really it's pretty straightforward to figure out how long it will take. And then again, that's for a right where we send a command and wait for a response. Here we could also do a read when we wanted to read the output of channel one, for example, and we could try that and see what that result is. But in any case, um, what we do is we just open the port and then do a write. And again, it's about six milliseconds. Each time we do it, it's a little bit different. But in general, this tells us that the response of the signal generator to a write command to, to set the signal generator is something less than 10 milliseconds probably, right? So that gives us a good idea that, you know, probably if we're dealing with a signal generator, we're talking about 10 milliseconds response. So we can, we can do things every 10 milliseconds or so. So that's about it. You can do something similar. Maybe in the future, we'll look at the scope response time. But that gives you an idea of how you can um, measure response times for a, a device. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you like the videos, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.